Childhood is an exciting time of development, and for each child there are age-specific milestones that are expected to be met. Assessment for these milestones will either elicit normal findings or potentially abnormal findings which would require further interventions. The ASQ-3 is a reliable tool or questionnaire often used in healthcare to assess development. We would expect a baby to begin to develop his language and communication skills, and by four months old they should be able to start expressing their needs. Examples of milestones that are expected in four month olds include laughing aloud, having a cry that sounds different depending on if they are hungry, tired, or in pain, and beginning to make babbling and cooing sounds. They may also copy other sounds they may hear. Tips for parents at this age is when your child cries, respond as soon as possible, depending on the meaning of the cry signal. Also, repeating sounds back to your baby will increase the interaction between you. way to screen for developmental milestones and if your baby is reaching them is to have the parent um, fill out an ASQ-3 um, and they're split up into sections. So the first section is communication and those questions to ask the parents would be, does your baby chuckle softly? After you've been out of sight, does your baby get excited to see you? Does your baby stop crying when she hears a voice other than yours? Does your baby make high-pitched squeals? Does your baby laugh or does your baby make sounds when looking at toys or people? Another area of development to assess is physical development, which includes gross and fine motor movements. A patient at four months old should be able to bring their hands to their mouth. They should be able to push up from their elbows when they're lying on their stomach. They should be able to hold their head without support, potentially roll over onto their back from their stomach start grasping at things and starting to shake a toy they're holding. Parents can facilitate progression of, the, of these milestones by leaving rattles near their little ones so they can reach for them and shake them. Also encouraging their baby to roll over, ensuring they're on a hard surface. The next section is gross motor skills. So the questions to ask would be, while the baby is on their back, does he move his head from side to side? After holding his head up while on his tummy, does the baby lay their head back down on the floor uh, rather than letting it drop or fall forward? When the baby is on their tummy, does he hold his head up so that his chin is about three inches from the floor for at least 15 seconds? When the baby is on his tummy, does she hold her head straight up looking around? When you hold him in a sitting position, does he hold his head steady? And lastly, while the baby is on their back, does the baby bring um, his hands over his chest, touching uh, her fingers? For the fine motor section, does your baby hold hands open or part open? When you put a toy in her hand, does baby wave it around at least briefly? Does baby grab or scratch at his clothes? When you put a toy in her hand, does baby hold onto it for about one minute while looking at it, waving it around or chewing on it? Does baby grab or scratch their fingers on a surface in front of him, either while being held in a sitting position or when on his tummy? When you hold your baby in a sitting position, does she reach for a toy on a table close by, even though her hand may not touch it? As a four-month-old starts to develop their personal and social skills, you should see them hitting milestones such as smiling and interacting with those around them. Parents can facilitate their progression by sharing in their little one's interests, by pointing and looking at things. They can also try smiling at their baby and speaking in a kind tone to them. For personal and social, does baby watch his hands? When baby has hands together, does she play with her fingers? When baby sees the breast or bottle, does he seem to know when to be fed? Does baby help hold the bottle with both hands at once? or when nursing, does she hold the breast with her free hand? Before you smile or talk to baby, does he smile when he sees you, sees you nearby? When in front of a large mirror, does baby smile or coo at herself? 
As problem-solving skills continue to develop in the four-month-old, you may see them begin to become more interested in toys, such as if you wave one in front of their face, they may start to grasp towards the toy or even potentially stick it in their mouth. For problem-solving, when you move a toy slowly in front of baby's face, does baby follow the toy with his eyes, sometimes turning his head? When you move a small toy up and down in front of baby's face, does baby follow toy with her eyes? When you hold baby in a sitting position, does he look at a toy that you placed on the floor or in front of him? When you put a toy in her hand, does your baby look at it or try to put it in her mouth? When you dangle a toy in front of baby while he is lying on their back, does he wave his arms toward the toy? Other questions used to assess for areas of developmental concern would be asking the parent if the child is able to use his hands and legs both equally well, if they're able to have their feet flat on surfaces almost all the time, um, asking about any sounds about the child not making noises, any family history of hearing concerns, any concerns for the child's vision, any current medical problems, um, concerns about potential childhood behaviors, or just any other concerns at all. After all the questions have been asked, the scores can be tallied in the appropriate categories and marked in the box scene. Children scoring in the white boxes are meeting their milestones appropriately and assessment should just continue at subsequent visits as indicated. Gray, scoring that um, results in the gray area is borderline. The healthcare professional should provide category specific activities which would enhance these children's skills. Result scoring in the black category is abnormal and a referral for further assessment and intervention would be typically indicated. Locally, we have first steps that can make assessment and recommendations for these children. Early interventions for any kind of developmental delay is very important um, when discussing positive outcomes for children. So advise the parents to definitely let the healthcare provider know if they notice their child isn't watching things as they move. The child isn't smiling at people, can't hold their head steady, isn't making cooing or other sounds, can't bring things to their mouth, is unable to push down with their legs and feet when placed on a hard surface, or if they're having any trouble moving one or both eyes. Maltreatment is important to look for in any child, and some indicators of abuse or neglect could include seeing a dirty or malnourished child with poor hygiene, um, if they're inadequate, inadequately dressed for the weather, um, if they have multiple dental caries, if they're always sleepy or hungry, um, if they exhibit food insecurity behaviors, um, if their home has fire hazards or unsafe conditions, if they're exposed to illegal substances, if they don't have heating or plumbing, um, they don't have um, in, in if they don't have adequate food intake, um, they don't have um, prepared meals, or if they don't have proper supervision, if a child is um, has a history of repeated physical injuries or ingest ingestion of harmful substances, um, the child is cared for by another child, or the child is left alone in the home car or anywhere without supervision. If any maltreatment is suspected, it's obligated by the state to contact the Indiana Department of Child Services and report the maltreatment. In addition to assessment, anticipatory guidance is necessary to promote knowledgeable caregivers and to reduce poor patient outcomes. To begin, it is imperative to assess each patient's social determinants of health, which can pose higher risk in various areas, and indicate necessary interventions that may be necessary for their well-being. Assessing for and decreasing risk associated with lead exposure is imperative for development due to its toxic effects. 
Homes built before 1978 can pose the risk for lead paint and lead dust can also be brought into a child's home from the clothes of a person that works in an environment with lead, advising patients of these risk factors as well as assessing for these risk factors is important to reduce the toxic effects associated with lead exposure. Episodes of irritability are common in the four month old. After assessing if the baby is clean, fed, and in no danger, ensure that parents have various calming strategies involving consoling and even having a variety of play activities for this child to engage in may be beneficial. Swaddling is no longer recommended at this age. It's also important to educate parents that at this age we do want to avoid screen time and instead, instead spend time interacting and playing with the child as well as engaging in various activities such as reading or singing to them and encouraging tummy time. This will help positively impact their growth and development. Oral health is another topic relevant to the four month old. Teething is expected to begin within the age of four to seven months old. So advising the caregivers that drooling and fussiness can increase during this time is helpful. Cold teeth rings may be implemented to help the babies with any discomfort. Advise the parents that they should avoid putting a child to bed with a bottle. They should wash drop pacifiers and they should be cleaning any teeth or the baby's gums with a soft cloth or toothbrush with a very small amount of the fluoride toothpaste that should be no bigger than a grain in size and all these interventions will be important for good dental care. Nutritional assessment is very important in this age group. Four month olds typically tend to gain about one half pound to one pound every week. As a healthcare provider, reviewing growth charts at each visit will ensure appropriate monitoring of a child's physical growth to ensure that they are maintaining the curve on the growth chart. Recommendations for four month olds include exclusive breastfeeding with supplementation of 400 IU of vitamin D. Alternatively, non breastfed children should be intaking formula that is fortified with iron. Healthcare providers can assess and educate it on needed as to the appropriate amounts of formula. Typically, children in this age group should have between 30 to 32 ounces per day. Solid foods are discouraged until a child reaches six months old. Educate breastfeeding mothers that it's important to check with the healthcare provider before starting on any new medications, which includes all herbs and supplements. Safety is a crucial piece to discuss with all caregivers. Babies at four months old should continue to be in a rear facing car seat in the back seat. Encourage parents to never risk driving themselves or their babies under the influence of drug or alcohol. Continue to reinforce the concept of back to sleep. Children should be placed on their backs. However, it is important to let parents know if the child does roll over on their stomach, it's not necessary to flip them back over on their back each time. However, they should avoid any loose or soft bedding, pillows, toys, or any other objects in the crib. They should ensure that the crib is safe and meets all the safety standards and regulations. As the baby begins to become more active, it's also important to educate parents to assess for safety risks within the home. Some examples um, can include ensuring that the water temperature should be set to less than 120 degrees. Baby should also never be left unattended in, in situations such as in bathtubs or high places such as on changing tables, beds, or sofas. Another important piece of information to educate parents on is the importance of promoting preventative health care, which includes vaccinations that may be indicated for this patient at four months of age. We would just refer to the CDC vaccination schedule for these recommendations. Additionally, encouraging parents to protect their children by staying up to date on their own vaccinations. An important thing to consider for a patient of four months old as they are unable to get an influenza vaccine at this age. So we should really be encouraging parents to get their vaccination to 
provide um, protection for their children as much as we can.